remember that they're changing my voice. Keep in mind that my life story could have been told in a way that is so much better and I needed a suitable helper. I needed people to come together and to secure a place with fresh air where I wouldn't be fumed and to, you know, pressure the government to stop provoking me covertly with technology, etc. And unfortunately, those things didn't happen. So I'm going to discuss a little bit about my experiences on the streets of Morgan Hill. But first, let me give you a couple of scriptures to help you understand. I've done a lot of explaining of ideas to help you understand my story so that you would have a certain understanding of life to see why and how I move masterfully in spite of what a bunch of people who are hypocrites and out of touch with God's plan might say. So Proverbs 15.4 The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Now, remember, the Bible is by Bill. You can't get at the Spirit of God. God's Spirit is almighty. There's nothing you can do to contaminate it. But you can insult God by trying, and it comes with extreme consequences, right? So the soothing tongue, right? Actions speak louder than words. It is, for example, a gorgeous woman coming around and helping me make my videos because I'm sabotaged, because this is a planet where people work together to get things done, etc., right? If no one is helping out the most righteous person ever, his videos aren't going to be as good as they otherwise would be, right? But they tell important messages nonetheless, and you kind of see the taxes of the New World Order, etc. So a soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. In the same chapter, it's one of the best chapters in the Bible, Proverbs 15. We go down uh, nine verses, we get Proverbs 15, 13. A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. So what crushes the spirit? A perverse tongue, right? Perverting the course of justice, choosing perverts instead of the righteous man, what have you. And heartache. So you're not supposed to break the king's heart. Okay? And it says also in Proverbs that, you know, my favor is like a rain cloud in spring. Things of this nature. So you're supposed to want to get the blessings from God by rallying to me. Obviously, if you love me, you keep my commands and you would rally to me and obey God to me. So with that being said, when I came to Morgan Hill, I was, you know, I had to ask my, my brother and my mother the other day, and sometimes they get facts wrong for whatever reason. And so my mother said that we have 50 horses at some point, and maybe that she was trying to throw off my videos, I don't know. But from the best of my recollection at this point, um, well, I came to Morgan Hill maybe when I was like 11 years old, somewhere around then. And I wasn't really allowed to go out very much, right? Um, wasn't allowed to drive in the car with any vehicles with older people. And I didn't really have any friends that were older anyway who could drive when I was 11. And so I'd get dropped off um, in town and I'd walk around. But that really didn't occur to a large degree. Um, until, oh, until I was maybe about 13 years old when I started smoking cannabis, okay, uh, to some degree. And I'd smoke the cheaper stuff. It was not, not very potent, okay. And I would, you know, look for people to sell me, the, you know, that, that, that cheaper stuff, okay. And so that started probably when I was about 13 years old, which is around the time there was the first diagnosis, right, where... I was diagnosed, you know, because I was getting bad grades and I had gone to San Jose State Summer School around that time and I was getting bad grades and after getting an A the first time I went to the summer school, I got a very bad grade. I didn't want to tell my parents um, why that was. So I said that I was kind of sitting there and I lost track of time, which is consistent with being high or something, but to, but to the extremer, you know. But that's not even what happened. What happened was I just was not doing the work. And so then I got this diagnosis um, from one of their, their friends, a doctor in San Jose, and they basically agree with my parents' assumptions. And that started a long series of events of me disagreeing with my parents about uh, my mental health, okay, which is something that the government sought to capitalize on and, started, and, and sought to play me out as crazy instead of having people answer my arguments, even though 
I eventually ended up getting a college degree and so on and so forth, which is not something that somebody with a severe mental illness uh, could uh, could achieve. I've never heard in my life of anybody who has an untreated and severe mental illness that graduates college. I've never heard of that in all my research into mental health, much less a top martial arts challenge. So it's, it's absurd to think that anybody is more sane than I am when you consider the arguments that are being made here, the courage, and the fact that the Egyptians and others said the heart, you know, the courage, the heart, the passion is the seat of true intelligence because life decisions are greater than book smarts, right? What good are book smarts if you're not wise, if you don't have solid life decisions? So I, you know, see how it requires this extra explanation for you to understand. It's not say stupid stuff, which people are known to say uh, instead of addressing my core arguments and um, it being mature enough to discuss philosophy and and what was a mistake and what wasn't. Even the word mistake is mistake, right? You're missing the point when you don't understand that what one miss is missing out on, miss sing, right? The idea of a true love song in its pure form, right? And there's songs in the Bible, that's what Psalms are and so on and so forth. So people are missing the point. They're making mistakes. So as I'm, I'm being shunned by society early on, um, and if they're feeling me right now, make it harder for me to speak. I'm not like crying about it or whining about it. They try to do things to change my voice and then they change it again by the time it's uploaded. But anyway, so as I'm walking around in Morgan Hill, um, looking for weed growing up, there's various situations that are occurring with local thugs and, and gang members, and them trying to rip me off and so on and so forth, and me trying to point out to them that, hey, I come from a lot of money, and it's stupid to try to rip me off for $20, which even back then uh, wasn't a lot of money. This like 30 years ago or whatever. Okay, 28 years ago, whatever. And they didn't understand. They didn't have a sort of entrepreneurial way of thinking. And a lot of people don't want me to get into, you know, the tough guy arguments being made here. Okay.